but I finally decided to bite the bullet. So the next fish are moving. Uh, another tip I can give you guys for catching fish that are really fast. You can see them exploring their new, their new tank. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be shifting some fish in the fish room around and I'm gonna be talking to you guys about some future plans in the fish room because I've made a decision finally with what I'm gonna do in here. So let's get into this week's video. So guys, this space looks quite messy in my fish room and I hate it. And I just basically store all my fish food and equipment that I'm not using in this corner and on that table and underneath it, as you can see. But I finally decided to bite the bullet. I decided to get some more larger tanks. So a couple of weeks back, I did a video about the 10 things I regret with my fish room. And one of those was not having enough large tanks in the fish room. So I'm going to be getting at least three fish tanks, all four foot long by two foot wide by 14 inches high. So they're gonna be shallow tanks. They're gonna have a large footprint for fry grow out, as well as if I need to, I can split the tanks as I, as I need. Uh, like I said in that video, if you have some larger tanks, you'll be able to split them off as you need with the fish that you need. Now, I'd love to run those tanks off a sump, but I'm not gonna have a room for a sump with this rack because it is gonna be th uh, three tanks high. So what I'm gonna do is probably run series of canister filters off them, I'm not sure yet, but all the tanks will be plumbed together as well, just so there is a lot of water volume going through that system, it's stable as, as I can get it, and for ease of water changes. I only have to change water out of one of those tanks, pump it back into one of those tanks, and they'll all get that water from the water changes. I'm also going to be building the stands for these tanks, and they're gonna be a different design to the fish tank stands I built previously. So if you think that will be of use to you, Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that content. So some changes coming to the fish room. I'm hoping to get rid of this drum uh, out of the fish room and get some IBCs and I'll do water changes off them. I'll have them sitting outside from now on instead of uh, taking up space in the fish room. The benefit of having your water change water in the fish room, of course, is that it's very close by for you and it is the same temperature as everything else in the fish room. But I'm gonna forego that and uh, move them out of the fish room and then I can have a massive amount of water change water spare for when I do my water changes. At the moment I'm quite limited. I only have three of these drums uh, to do all the water changes in the fish room. So having a couple of those IBCs will really help me in the fish room. Some changes are coming and the fish room is going to look a whole lot neater. So guys, so I'm going to move some of these albino bristlenose catfish out of their parents' tank. Uh, I've noticed that the male's tail it's getting chewed. Um, there's no other fish in this aquarium apart from bristlenose catfish. So I suspect some of his, the larger fry uh, doing that damage to his tail. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Hopefully he's all right. Uh, the female seems fine. All the tail and fins are looking good. And all the other bristlenose are fine as well. I don't know if it's a sign of old age, maybe. But uh, I'm gonna get some of the larger fry out of here regardless because there are quite a few as you can see. And some of the larger fry have bristles like this guy over here is starting to grow bristles so it's a male so those guys are going to go into this tank As you can see there's not many bristlenose catfish in here anymore uh, I've sold a lot of them uh, there are some hiding underneath the driftwood uh, yeah I sold a lot out of this tank so they'll go into this tank the larger ones and uh, hopefully they'll leave the male alone so these are the guys I'm going to leave in the tank I feel like I've caught the biggest bristlenose that were in here uh, the rest of these guys can stay with their parents and hopefully the male's tail will look now. So the female has got no structure to go with me, so she's trying to get near the male in this cave. I'm going to return the driftwood and the sponge filters back into their aquarium. And I'll show you the other tank. So all the bristlenose are in there. The final grow out tank ready for sale to local fish stores and other hobbyists. Now, I'll just give you a little tip on how to catch some bristlenose. I found this handy. Now, you'll notice one side of the net has like the stitching overlapping, see that? That's the side of the net you want to use to catch a fish. This side of the net looks neater, right? So there's no stitching being exposed on this side of the net. It's like clean, a clean line. When you use this side of the net to catch bristlenose up against the glass, they just stay in the net. There is nothing to push them into the net. However, 
when you use this side of the net with the stitching pointing inwards towards the middle of the net they get caught in that stitching around the edge here and then that pushes them back into the back of the net once they hit that side netting that sticks out that kind of makes them once they bump into it it will make them divert the other way and swim into the net so with your nets use that frill that's around the net see this frill here use that that will, it's, it makes catching bristlenose and other fish a lot easier when you have them up against the glass with that side of the net facing the glass. Heaps easier to catch them a lot quicker. And catching fish a lot quicker means they're not as stressed. So the next fish are moving are my Ventralis Chartica. They've grown quite large in this tank. They were born in this tank. Uh, their mother mouth brewed them in here. And yeah, they're grown very large in this tank. It's time to move them out. So they're going in here with their parents and a four foot long tank by two foot wide by two foot deep. So they'll have a lot of swimming space. I'm just concerned that the, the parents might attack them because these guys are much larger than these guys. Uh, hopefully they'll be okay. They need the swimming space, they'll get used to it. So it's been just over a week since I put the Ventralis fry in the tank with their parents. And yeah, they're doing quite well. Really pleased with how they're going in here. As I said, I was a bit worried that they might get belted by uh, some of the males in this tank, because there are three adult males, but obviously that guy there is the most dominant male showing off at the moment. So now they're in this large tank. They've got all the swimming space they need, and they've been feeding fine and right at home in this larger tank now. So I'm really pleased that I made this transition. It's just the perfect time for them to come into a larger tank. So onto this tank, uh, the Regani tank. It's not going too good. The moment I put the nets in the aquarium, the Regani all shot to the back of the aquarium and went and hit in the rockwork in the caves. Now the parents are kicking the babies back out, so I'm just relying on them moving the fry back to the front of the aquarium uh, from their spawning site, and I'll catch them as they kick them out. So I have caught few and I got lucky with one netting, I caught four in one go. So I've added rocks to this aquarium because if you didn't know the Chromis Fragani are rock dwellers, they're cave dwellers, they need rocks so uh, it'd be a bit cruel to have them in a bare bottom tank with absolutely nothing in the tank for them to find shelter in so I've added some slate here and uh, they'll adjust to this aquarium in no time. But again because the water's all the same no need for acclimating, just pop them straight in the aquarium. You see them exploring their new, their new tank. Another tip I can give you guys for catching fish that are really fast is to try to get the net underneath the, the fish and then scoop, scoop the fish up. I have a much better success catching fish this way, particularly my white Altaenocolobus calvus, and it works really well with the Regani. So, as you can see that there, the Regani are starting to come out of the cave. The parents are kicking them out. You can see that one there is starting to kick the fry out that they don't want near their brood in their spawning site. So this is what I'm relying on to catch the Rikani out of the tank rather than removing the rock work from the aquarium and disrupting the parents further. So I rely on them moving the fish out for me and uh, slowly catch them. It takes quite a bit of time because of the rock work and these guys are so fast. Anyway. I'll get on with it and hopefully I'll be able to catch them in the next few hours. <laughs> so there you have it guys, I hope you found that video informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons, I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.